Well, welcome everyone. Welcome. Welcome back. Glad to have you. Always. Yeah, Jeff, how have you been? Good, brother. How about you? Better than I deserve. No, no, you can say that. Absolutely. Yeah, that's not mine. I took that. That was somebody else's. But um, that's been this week, man. It's been a week uh, or two of a lot of, um, like, holy cow. Two, like, for, two for me of yeah? a up and down shit for me. Really? More so just me and me, not in other little nuances and bullshit in the world, but little up and down things that just... Man, threw me off my game, like I told you. Yeah, well, let, let's hear one. Last week, so yeah. Let's hear one. Oh, you know, just like stresses of, uh, you know, when you deal with insurance company nonsense and things, you know, or medical stuff, man, you, it's just like, you wonder why that system is so screwed up, like the how long you got to be put on hold. Oh, well, let me look into it. And then they get back to you. Ah, I'm not seeing it. And then like you get disconnected, you call back. Yeah, I'm just not finding it. And then eventually you get the right person. Oh, yeah, I see exactly what you're talking about. How is it like I've talked to like five, six different people and right. finally you are the one within like two seconds that can find what I need to do and then everybody else is lost in translation, confused out of this world. Yeah, it's almost like they're working on um, on systems that don't even talk. Yeah, and so that like made me think of like something like you said, like, oh, that's not me, I didn't steal it. It's something I read and I liked and it like these past, yeah, maybe a week and a half, it really makes me think is, you didn't have a bad day. The world had a bad you or me in this case is the world was going on and it was good. You just got a bad version of me those couple of days. And I'll tell my wife and like my daughter, I'm like, yeah, I'm like, yeah, I'm sorry. Like, it's just like stress of nonstop, just random things. Kind of just like, it's like, oh, cool. It'll end. Nope. Another thing. Nope. Another thing. Nope. Another thing. It's like, okay, cool. It's kind of like subsided. And then you just kind of understand, like when I talked about the weightlifting thing, it's just kind of like, it is what it is. It'll, it'll just, whatever's supposed to happen with it will happen with it. And yeah. It, but it was stressful enough dealing with people who were not doing their jobs of the simple things that I needed them to do, like questions and answers and, Hey, I need right. this. Can you send me this, 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 and this and other nuances of some old things. Sure. I'm not going to get into because yeah, yeah. But of, you know, like, Hey, can you send me this? Yep. Hey, you know, I've been asking for that. You know, can you send it to me? Yep. Been asking, you know, this, so we'll go back old school stuff of yeah, earlier yeah. this year, sure. trying to get things that I need from yeah. that old stuff. Yeah. Hey, can you say, yeah, I'll get it sent over to you. Okay, cool. Yeah. Check on that email. Thanks. <laughs> Nothing right. still, you know, so it, it's just those little things. And I think it's just this, you know, one week, it's just like with everything, it's just like everything just aligned in a bad way, not a good way. Oh, well, you know, to just really, dr you know, drive me nuts and, Man, it, it got me. And this past weekend, I was like, you told my wife with certain things, and I was so frustrated. It was replacing uh, the lights in the kitchen, like putting up new fixtures. Uh, she sold these other ones. Some lady, well, okay, cool. So she got some new ones and put them up. That's, you know, taking down lights, it's a pretty simple thing. Right. Hook, bracket. It's one man. The bracket was not big enough to cover the um, recessed lighting mm -hmm. receptacle. Then the bracket was wasn't long enough so when you put the canopy up you couldn't get the screws to mount it so i had like i took a drill out started refabricating drilling holes in this new thing then i had to go get a new canopy and this and that wow. it was like three days of nonsense but i was so like fixated fixated on it but in a, in a rage of other things that i could not see clearly and it yeah. wasn't until uh, what day was it saturday sunday one maybe it was sunday maybe one of those days that I finally just sat there and I was like, man, you're letting this stupid light, you know, I'm looking down at this table and I'm you're letting this stupid light kick your ass when it, and it's way more, you're making it way more complicated than it needs to be. And I was just so frustrated with things that it wasn't seen. And I got the new canopy then. Yeah. Literally was that then changed the other two. And it was like, I was done with those two in like five minutes. Yeah. The longest thing was measuring these two pendulum lights. I'm like, okay, cool, 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 done. And I'm like, but in that, heat of rage and being pissed off simple little things get so skewed that it became a lot more difficult than it needed to be yeah, but man. i could not let that heat inside my head i'm sure you know we've all had those of course i could not get it to stop to where i could just focus and i'm like ain't this some shit and i look back and i'm like man you're so stupid but not stupid. i will say yes it is up. my fault of those things but also the designer, the manufacturer of that light did not make the canopies and the brackets big enough to cover your 
you know, recessed lighting receptacles. Right. To where right. you could see the hole still in your ceiling. I'm like, they're all standard. Where in the hell would this have fit? Right. Yeah. Maybe they do it different in California, probably where it came from. Who knows? Not do you mean? Sorry, Who knows? California. When you're not in that industry, though, you don't know. No, those and things. I don't know either. I'm like, it just was so frustrating to like butt my head for how many days, and it's like, you know what? I'm done. Do you think that maybe? <clears throat> just a guess. I just thought of this. Do you think that maybe when we get upset about something, and we don't find that resolution for ourselves, or we don't let it just move on, that that shit pile, if you will, starts a little higher the next time you I, add I, more I th- on, yeah. right? And so. then all of a sudden you're you're trying to work on a light and the shit you're work you're trying to get a hold of somebody on the phone and the, it's all sort of adds up. And if you don't ever come back to center, right? You yeah. so you keep getting you keep getting oh, all angry, yeah. right? Yeah. Oh no, so, it was everything because you know dealing with the insurance company stuff, trying to get things from two different companies to align some stuff. And getting some other stuff that I just want for personal record that you should always have on file, especially when tax time comes around. Trying right. to get all that stuff before that season hits again. You know, it's just how my brain works. I'm like, okay, doing this, this, and that. And I think, like, each day it's like, oh, now I got to deal with this shit again. Yeah. And this shit. Like, one day I was probably on the phone five plus hours with insurance companies trying to get some answers. Like, hey, I need this. Can you guys get this sent to me? Oh, hold on a little. Uh, yeah, we're just not finding it. Oh, we'll send it right over via email. It'll be there about 30 minutes. Hour passed, two right. hours. Yeah, yeah. Hey, yeah. And all this, and then two, uh, like I, I think, not getting good sleep also. Oh, of course, mind running. It's so, like, I think, like our daughter did woke up not feeling good early Saturday morning, and then we went back to bed. I'd get out of bed to like ten on Saturday, worked out, ate, try to mess around with that light again. I told my wife, I'm gonna go lay down. I'm just. And I fell back asleep for another like three, four hours. Wow, you needed that, huh? On top of we went to bed probably like around nine. Yeah, so I got up and I I opened uh, at the new business I'm running and stuff like that. I was like, yeah, covered it, and got it. So I got off early, but I was like, cool, got off early Friday, got a bunch of stuff done. Yeah, but they're like literally, so let's say you know slept almost twelve hours, and then slept another three, four in the afternoon. I was just beat, beat. Yeah, sure. And I think when you're pushed emotionally and I'm sure you can some of the things you've experienced and others who are listening like you just pushed emotionally even though mine was not as serious as other matters things right. it was just eating at me like it drained me to nothing that yeah you got to that point oh, that yeah. you don't want to be at and I beat the shit out of myself working out this past week too and it was sure. just like man but my body is like I could have just slept my wife was just like what the hell are you feeling good I'm like I don't feel sick right my body is physically drained but my mind is sitting here internally just doing this to itself that I need to sleep, yeah. but I need it to shut off. And I usually, uh, you know, like I'll listen to the iPad, put a show on, and I, I don't stare at it. I'll just have headphones. She goes, came in when I was taking that nap. She goes, I'm taking this away from you. And I'm like, oh, <laughs> bullshit. That's awesome. <laughs> she laid with me for a little bit, and our daughter was playing in the other room. Where'd you go, goes, Kelly? Yes. So I thank her that. And so then I was like, you know what? I got my phone still. And I was like, so what I did is I put on those relaxation melodies, mm-hmm. put it to the calming hurts, put it on some, like, uh, zen flute, uh, river right and like some nature and just perfect volume and like i just sat and really focused in on it and did yeah. meditation with nothing and then dude i was out good and then eventually and like it you know it played the entire time while i was sleeping then i awoke from it and it's still playing yeah and then i just laid there and i was like okay cool and we'll started to kind of get back and then when i woke up sunday started to feel a little normal and like cool my brain's not sitting here left and right or whatever fighting each other yeah man yeah you, you should come with me to one of those guided meditations. I want to, man. Like, you, it makes me very excited to hear what you, you're experiencing from it. But it's just like, man, sitting here just yeah, not being able to. And my wife's like, this, that's some things like I feel sometimes. And it's crazy yeah. to think that, you know, unless you talk to somebody about it, you don't realize that probably almost everybody's having that battle. Yes. And it just hit me so bad this past week. And it's, I was sitting on yeah. the couch, like, about ready just to – break down and lose it like you know yeah. right, right on the verge there like you know you can see the water's coming like the eyes get a little puffy and it was just like i don't i just could not explain it it's like i had a couple days off and it was like that quote that i kind of said is i didn't have bad days the world just got a bad me for those days of things i couldn't just dissipate as they came in let's just call it the beginning or the end of a cycle man just yeah. like the full moon we just had it's, it's just a cycle it's a thing that that all of us, I know I do the same thing about once a month. I'm like, I, I don't know. Like today, 
Today, even, I'm like, I, I want to take a nap. Couldn't take a nap. Well, they joke and say, you know, women have that time of the month. Men. Right. Of course. Men do, too. Yeah, yeah, right. <laughs> um, I think mine falls right in line with the moon cycle. And I I, I can't, you know, I'll forget things. Mm-hmm. Like, I lose focus. I'm a little groggy. Like, things happen. And then, if I allow it to, all those external noises become yeah. very loud. Yeah, and I agree. Right, and and that's where we talk about, and the, what you obviously did was you try to find center again, and you did so good for you. And it, it, and it I, took some days. Well, I could tell even still now, you know, you still need some calm, and you still oh, yeah. need some I right. St- so I'm glad you're here today. Yeah, I still got a little <laughs> bit of in me, you know. And uh, like I told you, a little like dude tried to like I can feel it run me off the road in his little tiny car today. It's like right. dude, I will run you over. But, yeah, you know those things. It gets but to you. It's just those things. But like you know, the past couple of days been really good. I'm blessed too that you know my new job, all my employees, you know that I oversee, like phenomenal people that make it very enjoyable. Let yeah. alone the people where I go to, like. In that, and it's just, it, I just needed a few days of like, okay, yeah. get this shit out. Absolutely. We all do. So, and so yeah. don't beat yourself up about no, it. No, I know? did those first couple of days because I was, I was such an asshole. And, you know, I told my wife, I'm sorry. I, and, you know, my daughter, like, you're listening. You know, my daughter won't be, my wife will be. But it's just like, <laughs> you know, I, I just was. And I think it's just those moments of life that capture you that you can't release because, like you said, each day it's like, oh, cool, I dissipate this. Well, I was just building on top of where the day before left off. Yeah, and totally. I couldn't man. get rid of it. Totally. Yeah. And that's why I think, you know, that old adage, like, don't go to bed mad. Well, don't go to bed uncentered either. Like, oh, yeah. Because you can go to bed not mad and still be a shitty person when you wake up. Yeah. I mean, you can go to bed centered and be a shitty person when you wake up, but the chances are much less mm-hmm. likely, you know? Yeah. It's, it's something, it's practice. It's, it's okay, well, today I'm going to do, uh, I'm going to work out or I'm not. Mm-hmm. Well, today I'm going to work out my brain or I'm not. It's it's the same exact thing. When you're at the gym, everybody thinks that you're 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 you know you're molding your mind, but you're really not. You're you're working your body. You're working muscle memory. You're working yeah. habit. You're working form and technique. The mind is just like okay, muscles. Let's fire. Yeah, you know what I mean. Oh, I agree. Like, let's let's fire. It's not that that fight or flight of you've been sitting alone by yourself for twenty minutes with no noise and your eyes closed. And your body is telling you you've got to move and you fight it. And then within seconds, you're right back to being numb and centered again. I agree. Right? Yeah, except for me, like, finding that center and being numb, it was fight and fight and fight and fight. There was no fight or flight. It was fight yeah. and fight. Well, I think that I'm so glad you brought this up, Jeff, because people need to realize, they need to understand that that just because, you know, you and I and other people and, and other people write books and we all say these things about a way to, to live that's a little easier, I fuck up. Oh, yeah. Jeff messes up. Um, It's inevitable. My wife will say something that turns me into, you know, uh, uh, John Belushi on a drunken bender, (laughs) you know, and I haven't even drank anything. I'm just out of my mind. Um, But that's only if I let it. Yeah. And that's, again, you have to have that strong mind that's that's pliable and it's fluid and it's all those things, but it has center. It always comes back to center. Yeah. And that was like me is like this – a few things of trying to get things squared away and taken care of. And it was those little things that were getting caught in the bigger picture. And then my net just got yeah, blown. Yeah, dude. And you don't that, even know it. Yeah. And then that's yeah. when I was just like, oh, and that's when I was just flipping out internally in my head like this. Oh, what a, this, this, this. And it's like, oh, man. Right, man. And it, yeah. even like doing the things like, okay, going to bed at night and like listening to meditation stuff still would not. Because Dude, it happens. my yeah. brain, no matter what, I could get my body to relax. Mm-hmm. Like I could be laying there full of peace. I'm like, man, I'm so relaxed. I'm so comfortable. But then my brain's like sitting here going, just yeah, totally going. And then that's yeah. like, I could not sleep for how many days. You like, know, now if you would have done that for two or three or four days in a row, mm-hmm. you would have ended up in the hospital. Oh, it, and like, they would have told you that you were manic and all these other I, things. It was literally getting bad. Like, you right. know, the small little things you just feel like at a moment, like... Yeah. You're just going to lose it. Yeah. Like fight or when flight you, kicks like in. when you said, you know, working yourself to death, how many, how many years ago that was. Yeah. 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 And, yeah. and that's how it felt. And it's just like, man. And that's why, you know, I wanted, I probably slept basically 12 hours from Friday into Saturday. And then later that day, laid down and slept. Yeah. And then even that night, when we, we didn't go to bed that late. And I still, hey, man, passed right out. Your, your body's trying to tell you something. Yeah. And, and it's those things that, you, you know, you guys got to really listen to is, you know, your physical health and mental health all align on that same plane that like my body was tired, 
but yet my mind wanted to go roaming. Well, I could have listened to my mind and just got up and just roamed the house. Yeah. yeah. But realizing that my mental state is not going to get any better if I don't get this rest, you know? Right. So, right. Yeah, totally, dude. Well, I'm glad you found that. I'm glad that you're finding it. I'm glad that oh, it's you realize that your cycle was coming to an end and it's time to be Jeff and, again. Yeah, and I think, too, with the culmination, starting all new workout stuff, getting back into the old training of when I used to fight, not to that full crazy extent slowly, but, man, doing my buddy E6, uh, like, steel mace training and stuff and some of this tack fit training that I used to do when I fought, like, dude, it's live, kicking the living shit out of me, but it's right. like, it's good. I like it. Yeah, yeah. But, like, it's... You know, you put that on top of it, physically beating myself down on top of the mental and everything else. It just, yeah, it hit. And I think it was just like, whoosh, well, that this, time that we all get. This is a good time to, to use the word balance. Oh, yeah. Because you were probably moving at a pace for a little too long that oh, yeah. may have been a little too high. I agree. Right? I think I was pushing the, the boundaries of, right. you know, for the past... I'd say like end of September, since we're only what what's day six of October here. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So like since end of September, a lot of not as good nights of full sleep. Yeah. Getting up early. Cause I've been like some days, like yesterday I woke up at three to work out before I train my clients. So then when I go to work, I'm done early. Yeah. And then I'm done for the day. I don't have to come home. And I like that because at the end of the day, it's just nice. Like, oh, cool. I'm done. I can hang out with the family. We can do whatever. Yeah. And that takes its toll, and I got to realize, like, as nice as that is, that's not always the smartest choice to wake your dumb ass up at 3 in the morning to work out. Right. And then go about your normal day, because, like, you know, like today, I'd be sh- I'd be sitting here, and this would be, like, hour 13 and a half if I had got up at that time today. And then it's just like... That would, that would be a horrible expectation to place on yourself, that well, you could still to function. Do, to do that day in and day out. Like, it's right. fine, like, yeah. okay, I got to do it once or twice a week. Sure. But to do that every day, and that's the things, like, I starting to do that's like oh man i can do this every day now you need to get that shit out of your head that is yeah you can do it but yeah it's not the best option for you well i tell you what man uh even you know on my birthday uh i just recently turned 44 and on my birthday you know my wife and my kids were awesome they did really great things for me uh, i got some really cool things that I, mm-hmm. i've been wanting for a while very unexpected and i realized i had no expectations going into the day well, yeah. It was the happiest birthday I've ever had. Well, I think that's Because how I had no expectations. You, sh- you should. I, I, right. I can't. Man, I read that somewhere, too. Or maybe you said it before. I probably that, did. I think you did, too. But yeah. I, we probably read it. Is that you should always. You said it. No, you did. Yeah. I can't remember what episode. But you did <laughs> say it. Um, of going into those scenarios with no expectations. Because if you put it here, you're so high. It's like, oh, man. Yeah. Like, you just go in just being open to the flow of whatever happens at that so, particular time. So what I did was it was a wonderful day, but I think I kept it wonderful because around midday I decided I'm going to get in my car and I'm going to go for a drive. I'm going to go hang out somewhere by myself on my birthday. It It was a nice weekend. It was beautiful. It was like 60 degrees here in the Midwest. And uh, I went out and I was just hanging by myself for a little bit, sat in the back of the car, just, you know, out the hatch, just chilling. Um, And doing that before I ever even needed to, really helped the rest of the day just stay perfect. Yeah. You know, and I I will say perfect. It was like, I'll say it was like a heaven on earth kind of day. But then again, the past couple of weeks for me have been like that. Yeah. They've been a little heaven on earth without what used to be the mania or that craziness that like, you're only going to get to that point when you are sleep deprived and you've worked yourself to the bone. No, this is, this is more real and more long lasting. This is, you know, this is all thanks to meditation, all thanks to yoga, all, I was say, yeah. all, all thanks to cannabis, all thanks to psilocybin mushrooms. Like, my life has been more pleasant and more pliable than it's ever been the past couple of few weeks. Mm-hmm. And I, if you don't mind, I'll just jump right into to what happened to me last week. Go for it, yeah. Polar, about it. polar opposite yeah. of, of what happened to you. So please bear with me. Uh, I don't say any of this to boast or, or to brag. It's just a different week. Yeah. Okay. So what I'll do. Yeah. Yeah. Right. So last week for me, I went to a, another guided meditation. It was a three hour session, not all meditation. Don't, I mean, I'm my biggest one. Yes. 30 minutes, but, uh, I've been going to now on a, on a semi-regular basis to a place here in Edwardsville, Illinois. Um, and I don't think he'd mind me saying it called integration meditation. Okay. 
And the integration part is how you integrate it with your day-to-day life. Mm -hmm. Not, oh, I go and I get centered and I love it and I'm great. And then the next morning I wake up and everything sucks again. Yeah. You know? So what I did was I went over there and we did like a, there was like a tarot card reading, which was cool, right? It was cool. I, unnecessary. I don't need that part. Yeah. Uh, I am, however, learning that on my own because I find it very interesting. But what he, what they did was <clears throat> an entry with an intro uh, introduction with that a little banter amongst us, you know, yeah. get to know each other. And then we went into this, like, uh, I don't remember if it was, it might've been an hour and a half. I don't know. Um, but it was a, a guided shamanic drumming meditation. And to have that live percussion in the room while you're meditating. Was live. Even yes. better. He was okay, playing cool. it live. And then he went into vocals with it, like Native American. Like the, like mm-hmm. a lot of, more yeah, a lot of yeah, the humming. Vocals. But some of his wasn't just the, the throat, like the vibration. It was mm-hmm. also a little tone from his mouth. Okay. Which made it very pleasant. I mean, I was like. Ooh, I wish I could get my phone and record this right now oh, yeah, because I, I would love to hear it more frequent or more uh, on a normal basis. So anyway, we did this <clears throat> and I mean, I may have used just a tiny little bit of mushroom, just a, just a tiny little bit. I know what my dosage is and I, I try to use it as, as a medicine. Mm-hmm. And so I knew that I was going to be going in and my intent, I set boundaries with this meditation for healing. Yeah. I knew that that the week or two prior when I had talked to myself and had that full-blown conversation with my child self that this was possible. Yeah. So let me see if I can do this again. Man, I had so much pain coming out of my lower back where I broke in it. Mm-hmm. It was it was horrible, but this time it was it was way different. It was much more it, I wasn't surprised by anything. Right. I was there and the music was going and it, there was no real um, there was no real pattern to it. So it was almost like when it went silent, you're like, you didn't know if it was over. Yeah. Or if he was taking a break or if he was changing instruments or whatever. You just didn't know. So you were very vulnerable. Like you, you didn't have control of anything. And what I did was I looked up. I was I found myself standing and I looked up and what I could only describe as a very dark in very unpleasant scenario, there was a dragon flying in the air. <laughs> I mean, a fire-breathing Game of Thrones dragon. And I'm looking at it, I'm like, geez, man, this is going to suck. I'm like, I know where this is going. Mm. And I'm about ready to go on a hell of, hell of a ride, and I really don't want to. Yeah. You know, but I wasn't scared. I wasn't anxious. I wasn't nervous. I just, okay, well, we'll see what happens. Well, after a few minutes of me sitting there pondering what this means and like, am I conscious or am I not? Or this whole thing. This dragon starts approaching me. Okay. And I'm like, oh, boy, oh, boy. This is going to, here we go. You know, I'm hanging on for the ride. And uh, the whole time, my lower back is just like, it's just killing me. It's just on fire, just lit up. It's If you can imagine where your, um, your L5, S1, down by your hips, yep. that very, very lower area, that's where I broke my back twice. And it's, it's not pleasant. It still hurts to this day, but this night it was on fire and I was laying down. It's very comfortable. Otherwise, normally this wouldn't happen. Well, about the time that I'm noticing the height of my pain, yeah, this dragon lands on the ground and this dragon proceeds to sort of walk around me and wrap me up. I was like, not like a boa constrictor, but just sort of with his tail and just sort of. So like you're in the center. And I'm in the center and it coils around. Kind of more like a protection kind of thing. By the time it's done, Jeff, it took its head and it just laid it down on the ground. It just went. (sighs) That dragon was exhausted from top cover, from overwatch, from always, always being on. And it needed to rest. And so for the rest of that evening. like your spirit animal kind of. Well, it's my animal, my Chinese uh, calendar animal. It is. And it's also my animal, my, uh, is it for a. astrology okay as well um so it made sense that it was there like afterwards right and like it, it just it wrapped itself around me it took a big sigh of relief and just laid its head down on the ground and rested you yeah. know much like one of my dogs would do mm-hmm. you know and to me i i the rest of that that evening was so enjoyable because i was able to exhale and not really care and I just took it for what it was. I was like, you know what, man? 
maybe like on those days when I say, you know what, maybe you should sit down for a few minutes. Yeah. That's what I'm going to do. And maybe on those days where you're like, I'm going to get up at three because I got to do this. Maybe you'll go, eh, maybe not. Maybe just skip that workout today. I'll be you okay. Know, you know, that's, that's, I think that's, that's what it's that's, telling that's us. That's the hard part is like, you know, I'm fine with like having like one, two days off, you know, but then like if I don't do something physical some days, like I really feel useless, not in a bad way, but like, man, you know, you really should, even if it's something short. And that's why I like getting back to some of this martial arts stuff because it's shorter versus my Olympic lifting, which would be, I could push it for an hour, but yeah. it's, if I take the designed rest, you're talking hour, 90 minutes, two hours pending the day Yeah, where I can, if I go, depending on these workouts, some of these are like 20, 25 minute, you know, EMOMs or AMRAPs or whatever, you know, every minute on the minute or yeah, as many sure. rounds as possible for you guys if you don't know what those acronyms mean. Um, and it's shortened to the point, so I can still squeeze them in, which is nice, but it just is one of those old feelings of, you know, the young athlete. Dude, you need to get a move. Sure. You need to do something. And that's a hard thing yeah. that, like, I had to get out of my system when I was younger is you can't work out every day. You can't go, 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 go. Your body will eventually stop. You my know mind what? can go. At that point, we can <laughs> well, reverse man. this now. Is My mind can keep me going for as long as possible. And that's of course. what my coach has always said. Yeah. Your body – you know, your mind will give out way before your body will. Yeah. It's yeah. very true. Yeah, I, I agree So if you that. can keep the mind sharper than the body, you will keep the body going a lot longer sure. than, you know, you think possible. And that was always my problem is like, oh, man, I could, I always got to go, go. And it still always sits in my head. And I think since I'm kind of tapping back into those old training styles is that I'm putting it into my head, I'll keep going, going, going. And when my body's tired, you shut up and you just keep going. Yeah. Have you watched Tyson lately? Oh, some of his stuff, yeah. Okay, so he's back to being a crazed maniac. Oh, yeah. Right, and like it's he, obvious when like you watch him. he talked him. about on, uh, what was it, with Rogan? He did that, but of, also when I really noticed it was on hot, on a hot box and with Mike. Okay. It's his own podcast yeah. he does, and he had a gentleman in there, and you could just tell, man, he was in this place where it was like, I don't know if he was really listening to the guy. It was really cool subject matter, but he just didn't have that same attentive, like, empathetic well, bits. It's, it's because his mind right now is preparing him for that for big fight. fight. Yeah. And so you don't have, your mind doesn't give you the opportunity no. to stop. And, and that's rest, where I think my right? mind goes, you know, no different than certain smells, sounds will take you back. Yeah. Well, it's recreating movements I've used to do, you know, old, old muscle memory of like, you know, oh, it's like riding a bike kind of thing. And I think my brain automatically shifts because like, I'll do like jump rope to warm up. I'll do jump rope stuff to cool down. And it's funny because like I literally get in that rhythm with that rope and my footwork. And then it's just like tunnel vision. And then my brain's like thinking like, oh man, you're, you know, yeah. warming up for the fight or like training for a fight. And I know right. I'm not, but it brings me back to that place of I thoroughly enjoyed when I trained and fought and that life that I lived as crazy as people who know me during that time frame, as strict as it was. I thoroughly enjoyed it. Sure. I yeah, had of fun course. doing it. I wouldn't have done it if I didn't. Right, right. But I think it takes me back to that and I just gotta understand, like, dude, you're not you're not going to fight anytime yeah, soon, yeah. you know, type thing. So Well, I just say that out of love and Oh, I completely agree. You know what I mean? Yeah, like I, I, I think saying. that I could un I could totally see you being like, you know what, dude, I'm not gonna do this today instead. Um, I'm gonna take Reese for a walk. Yeah. You know, I'm not gonna train today, but that's my exercise. I'm yeah, still moving my body. That but, I can I know. can now understand it and agree to in my head, whereas you would roll out on time. Pff, what do you, you want me to walk today? Pff, hell yeah, no. Yeah, I do that all I day. Anyway. On, I would have gone on for a walk, then all of a sudden, okay, cool, let's go. And I would time to run. And took yeah, off yeah, running. Yeah, yeah. With even if I didn't put the proper tire shoes on, it's, well, we're gonna go. Well, something I realized uh, a few months ago, and I don't, really, I didn't really want to admit it until recently. I'd be out skating with my son, you mm -hmm. know, and I was like, I'm just not. I'm not prepared for this. Yeah. I'm not going to say I'm not built for it. I'm not. I, I grew up skateboarding, um, but I'm not built for doing the things that he is starting to want to do. So at first I tried to fight that, but instead now I'm like, no, I'll keep focusing on me and it, maybe I'll get a little closer to being to where that is, but I'm not going to force it. I'm going to sit down and enjoy it and watch him. Yeah. And it's not me. Mm -hmm. it's, I, I don't care if I do something that day or if I don't. Um, two things are going to happen. One, I'm going to walk away unscathed. 
and so I can bring him back another day. Yeah. And two, he's going to get my full and undivided attention. Yeah. You know what I mean? So I'm not in the gym taking care of me every minute of every day. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's the same thing. Yeah. When I was yeah. doing that, like the other day, doing some stuff in my truck, and then my daughter got all, she's got her own little barbell and box and yeah. got her own, like a small kettlebell. So she got stuff out, moved the rings over, and did a little workout. So she was doing cleans and then split jerks. That's she, awesome. Like, to her best ability, because I've not taught her. I'm like, because I don't want her going out and doing it when no one's around, because she will. Right, yeah. Then she's jumping on her box. She's doing ring rows, and then she's doing some pull-ups and stuff off the pull-up bar. She'll jump off the weight stack and you know get on the actual rig. Sure. And she's like, I'm like, oh, well, how many are you doing? She goes, uh, maybe three, four rounds. I'm like, okay. Well, I did. I was. She got it out, and I was finishing up, putting my tools away from the truck uh, and stuff like that. And I was like, okay, cool. And so then I'm like, I just sat on my, the one little box and just sat and watched. I go, okay. I go, you got to do it this way. You going to finish? Come on. You're almost there. Pay attention. Come on. Right. Pull, pull. I'm like, can you do any more? Ah, four is good. Cause, and she's like, yeah. yeah, I didn't get my exercise in today. I didn't have practice today. It was yesterday. Oh, yeah, yeah. You know, she's like, I didn't have practice today. And it's just kind of like, okay, well, didn't she play outside, like, mm-hmm. you know, after class or something? Yeah, but, you know, I didn't really do much. So it's just like, and I'm thinking in my head, I'm like, wow. oh, man, that sounds like me, but it's good. But she she, but she but does it as an enjoyment <laughs> thing, not thinking she's got to do it for physical. Right, but what happens in 10 years from now when she's still and doing that? And that's the thing is that, you know, I think Kelly and I put into her head is that you do it for fun. It's not because... I have to do it Good. because I have to be this way to look this way. Like I enjoy it because I just enjoy it. Yeah. I like moving the weight, sweating, put it, pushing myself, you know, mentally, physically. So I think she sees it, you know, for eight as best you can, but yeah. it's one of those things as she gets older, if that, yeah, the always put that you do this for fun. You do this to help you with your sport. It's not that we have to become so obsessed and I don't think she yeah, ever yeah. will be Yeah, just because as much as, you know, Kelly and I are, you know, workout people, we are not obsessed with it that it has to be, oh, man, I got to do this. I got to do that. Oh, can't. you know, we yeah, yeah. have that balance, as you were saying earlier, between yeah. like, oh, we can have crappy food and enjoy and, oh, we'll go work out or we'll do this. Mm-hmm. We can have that, yeah. you know. Yeah, I think that's what it's all about. I mean, I, I just know, you know, like we've said multiple times, like I know what's working for me. Mm-hmm. I know what didn't work for me in the past. And I'm pretty sure that what's beginning to work for me now is what's going to carry me into the future. Yeah. A much happier and a much more sound person, not requiring anybody else to give me any of that. True. And it's weird because I've said that before, but it didn't feel like it does now. Now, you know, those moments alone, that, that work that we do for ourselves, that hard introspective and like brain molding work. Mm Mm-hmm. Doesn't require anybody else. No, it's, I think it's your little kind of your growth aspect. That, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, you're learning how to be yourself, by yourself, with yourself, for yourself. Can you imagine how badass you will be and what you can offer people if you just do the same? Oh, yeah. It's makes Simple, yourself but right. difficult in the process of Absolutely. getting to that point. Yeah. yeah, and so many of us go, well, yeah, I, I get in the gym. I got to protect my family. Why don't you get in the gym in your house, work out your mind for a little bit and just see how much more of a protector you'll be. Yeah. For real. That's some real shit right there. You don't have to be jacked out of your mind to protect your family because if you're dumb as shit up here and you're not disciplined. It sure won't matter. It won't matter because you're going to freak out and not be able to use the tools. That, that We can even, you can make the argument yeah. some of the badass Badass dudes in the military aren't these ripped specimens. No, but they're dude, disciplined. And even some of the best martial artists I know aren't these flipping, you know, just shredded people. Yeah. Be the dude walking down the street. Oh, I take that. Yeah, right. Yeah, some dude. of my coaches, hell no. You look at them like, if you didn't know them, oh, yeah, pff, good yeah. luck. Right. No, and it's, it's a discipline of everything. Yeah. You know, the trinity, the aligning, you know, the mind, body, and soul is that if those all three are sharp, you're good. Yeah, man. You know. Yeah, and just think, even if you're like, if those circles start to over overlap, even just a little bit to where you're not perfect, but you're a little sharper in the mind, maybe you're a little off on the body, but you're working on it, but maybe your spirituality isn't quite there, but you're working on it. Now, all of a sudden, these things start to get more aligned every day. And before you know it, when you wake up in the morning, you don't think, I have to be a kind soul. Mm-hmm. 
to myself and everyone else. It just happens. Oh, well, you know, they technically, if you think of like a, a Celtic, like kind of cross triangle knot that has the three points. Mm-hmm. I don't know what exactly it's called, but right, yeah. I'm sure you guys can visualize, you know, if I would draw this and it comes and you make it, all those connect. Or if you put the three circles over line of your, you know, aspects that yeah. they're always overlapped, how well they all align to sit over each other is just dependent on you, your timing, your life, your growth. But at some point, they're still all there. It's just how much are these pushing over each other to be completely aligned? So like right. last week, I will say the edges were just touching. <laughs> Maybe just enough that like I could like scan to see through all three of those. But then it's like, okay, they push a little more. Now, I yeah. guess you could say that you would reach enlightenment or, you know, true internal peace if they were like all to stack on top of each other. Yeah, but you know? good luck staying that way out yeah. in society. And, yeah, and that's day. one of those things of you like last week doing your guided meditation that you got to that point or, you know, like when we meditate or anything you do uh-huh. in your life that you get there. And it's, you sit there, but yes, once you exit that realm of meditation or calmness, yes, then they will. Right. Because but, it's true. We're not monks. We're not sitting in this society where we're in these sanctuaries where we right. are in a spiritual place or in an environment that just allows it to be maintained 24 seven. We are not in that environment. No, you're not. Nor should you want to be like that's well, maybe I you can't might, tell you yeah, what you, if can, you want to go what you it. want to. I mean, I've thought myself like, what kind of life would that be? Like if all you did was practiced on that, it would have to be an amazing life. And I see why people want to go and be a monk or become mm-hmm. part of that world. If you don't have other responsibilities. Yeah, I get that. But you can get close to that in your own way. You don't have to go the full Monty. You know, you don't have to wear the robe. You don't have to shave your head. You don't have to do any of these things if you don't want to. Yeah. You can just be the same old you and start to impress and surprise the shit out of your family because they're not going to know who you are in a good way. Yeah. You know, and that's an, it's an amazing thing when you walk into the room and because of your, um, I don't, I hate to say energy, but that's what it is. We'll just put that on the back burner. Yep. But whenever you bring your attitude in the room, that is one of fun. It's, it's, it's powerful. It's, 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 it's strict. It's disciplined, but it's, it's soft and it's lenient. Mm-hmm. It, it bends. That energy is being a protector. Yeah. Being a friend and being a father. That's being all of them. That's oh, yeah. my Trinity exactly. right there. Yeah. You know, for, for in my house with my kids because then that relationship will hopefully bleed over into the one with my wife or vice versa, because let's not get this. I'm no expert here, guys, not by any means, but I've been married longer than most of y'all. I've been married 25 plus years now. If my relationship with my wife is shitty, that bleeds down to my kids and that's going to affect them. It's a trickle effect. It is a trickle effect. And what happens is just like earlier when we said, I haven't squashed that fire from before, now another one's going to get thrown on it. So then what happens? You fight with your wife, blah, 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 or your husband, and then you go to your kids. I'd be willing to bet that the same kind of interaction happens there. Oh, I, I completely agree. Right? It's that whole aspect of that. And uh, my wife, Kelly, shared something. Uh, you're either a fountain. I can't remember what the other part, aspect was analogy. Um, you know, but the main thing is to think about is, are you a fountain where you're constantly flowing you're expelling joy and energy and people enjoy your presence or are you something like, you know, it sucks a life. And I can't remember what the other thing is, man. Like, oh, it's you know, okay. But That's right. are you, whatever this object is that is sucking a life. And it's just like, yeah, I can think like last week I was the opposite object. Yeah. But think about in that aspect of exactly like you're saying, like if I have this good relationship with my wife, I'll have a good relationship with my kids. If I have a good relationship with my family, I'll have probably a good relationship with my friends, yeah. my coworkers. It just, you know, wherever you want to start your waterfall, or your trickle effect, that it will just literally keep overfilling itself. The, the easiest way to do it is to start with yourself. Absolutely. And then start, it should. start with that relationship maybe with your spouse or whoever, and then maybe that relationship with your kids, and you're going to start to see that that trickling down and is, is, um, is not only crucial – but it is that behavior that we so often talk about cr- stopping from mm-hmm. the past. Oh, I agree. So that's that's how you stop the behavior is you change your behavior. You you essentially have to start with you. There's no connecting. Yeah, yeah. If you're not happy with who you are in the place you need to be, you will not have that ideal relationship with that significant other, your kids, yeah. whomever. You, you got to be careful, though, because when you get to a certain point and when you say something to your loved one that may be right, 
you have to remember that they're not where you are potentially, and you may insult them by saying something that you find very trivial. Yeah. So I found myself doing that to my wife this past week. I said something to her. I was clear heart, mind, body. I was not being malicious at all, but something in her did not receive that well. And so I I just, I, I saw that as sort of like, um, you know, it's it's not her fault because she doesn't, realize how she's responding and it's not really my fault because I didn't really think that it would go that way. Yeah. Right. But it still happened. She was still upset and I still, so, so what am I going to do? Well, the old me would have went and tried to talk my way through it with her. Mm -hmm. Well, that never worked out well because I'm still trying to tell her how I'm innocent and she's still trying to tell me how I'm guilty. So instead later I'm just like, Hey, listen, I'm really sorry that I said it that way. Didn't know it was going to hurt you. Um, but I had to take some time to process it and figure out why and how and all that. And I get it. So I'm sorry, you know? Yeah. Holy shit. New ball game, new referee, new players, new everything. Yeah. It, we did not go back to, to brawling. We did not go back to going to bed upset. And it was just one interaction. But how much did that one interaction change the rest of my night, day, or week? Just, yeah. It, it could have drastically, right? It's just simple little phrases and rewardings can connect it better to somebody else. And then, and we're all guilty of that. Again, that's, yeah. that's something that's very hard to do is articulate how it should be said yeah. in a manner that the other person understands and not offends. Absolutely. I yeah. Get that, man. And it's, it's, you know, you, you, you also have to be careful if you're a man, especially that when you get excited and you talk about something mm -hmm. that you're not too excited and it can't be misconstrued or misconveyed as, as you're being loud because you're being angry or obnoxious. Like myself, my voice carries. It gets very loud whenever I get excited. When I scream, it's downright terrifying. <laughs> I got to remember that because when I speak to my wife and my kids, sometimes I might be a little excited. Ah, what the hell? What do you mean? Well, you know, for instance, you know, Jeremy's mic is lower than mine volume wise because his <laughs> voice. Yeah, and when we first exactly. started, I was like, God damn, yeah, dude, yep. it's loud. Yep. But he naturally is. And yeah. that's, even when you're naturally talking, your voice, two Ooh. people are, you're, you're always above. Yeah. And I don't and mean I for that. No, but that's just you. And there's nothing wrong with that. Teachers used to always tell you, can you please keep it down? And you're like, I'm whispering. That's like <laughs> one of my old bosses. Like, dude, volume was always here. And it's just like, when he wanted, he wanted to hear it, but it was like, always here. It's like, well, you know, he's coming. Yeah. You know? Right. And it's, <laughs> it's not exactly a pleasant thing when you hear a voice that far away. It's just like, I don't know, something about it. Well, it's one of those you want it to be, I think, when you hear voices in, in a conversational thing, you want to be there. You don't like, you're out in the woods and you hear voices. Like, well, that's like, it, I think it puts just that right. eerie feeling in the back of people's minds that I hear a voice, but as people, you want to be in contact with that voice. You don't want it to be from afar. You want it to be close, mm -hmm. you know? So, yeah, that's what I see is yeah. in that manner. Yeah, absolutely. And I mean, I, I think we all have good intentions with our voice. You want to convey a message, you want to speak, but let's remember that not everybody speaks at that level. So no matter what we have to say, it's going to be hard for them to understand what we're trying to convey because oh. they're focusing on Jesus Christ. It's so loud. Would you just stop? You know, I, I've heard it before. I've heard it from my own wife. <laughs> I get it. I, I understand it now. I, 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 I don't mean for it to happen. You know, it's just like a, a big, strong kid. Yeah, you walk just up doesn't know his own strength. Yeah, punch you and doesn't there's, even realize. There's nothing it. wrong with it. You know, I think it's just those things that certain people have a more louder voice that carries, and there are other people who are more soft spoken. Yeah, that's, that's good. Just, that's good. It's just go. I I don't think it's a bad thing. You know, because when you need to be loud, you can be. Yeah. You know, when you've had events, it's like, dude, you don't need to get this dude a mic. You really could shout over the crowd if you really needed to. Yeah. But yeah. those are good things because. Your voice when you talk then can command presence. Oh, sure, yeah. And it gets yeah. the attention of the people you're trying to connect with versus some yeah. of those people who are soft-spoken can't always grasp the attention of the people they're trying to talk with, and then maybe a lot of what they said goes unnoticed. So I think there's right. there's pluses and minuses to all this stuff with um, you your know, voice. And, and imagine things. if you could, could speak the way you needed to in public, which may be a little louder, a little more commanding. Um. But then at home, you know that it has to come down a few decibels, or else you're not gonna mm -hmm. you're not gonna win the hearts and minds of your family. Yeah, you know, so to speak. Um, so I, I just I, I think that learning, going back to that discipline, and being able to get back to center, 
it helps you do that too. Yeah. It helps you to keep your, to just to be aware, to be mindful of your own presence and what you're bringing into a situation. And I, I, I know now I really like to go into situations quiet. I like to go into situations sort of watching and trying to understand lately, as opposed to having an idea and trying to talk off of that idea when I really haven't even enveloped yeah. the situation yet or let it envelop me. Oh yeah. So to, you know, more, more than not, I guess. Um, and that's, those are things that again, you have to continue to work on. And if you, if you don't, that's fine, but you know, we'll come back and listen to us in six months. Maybe then you'll be ready. Yeah. And yeah. that's with anything like, you know, some of these books that I've read, then you reread, they have more of a impact now. Yeah. than they did before, you know? Like, if you gave me the Tao of Wu by Riza, like, if I read that in my 20s, you know, it wasn't out then. Yeah. But if I read that then, I don't think I'd have the profound appreciation for it as I do now to where I mentally am in my growth of my journey. So it's all those things that you may not be ready for. You try to push yourself in it, and it's sometimes you come back to those things, and it's like, wow. You know, well, you comprehend things differently now too. Oh yeah. As it comes with age, but you yes, know what I mean? Like, I think yeah. big time difference in, you know, yeah. a decade of time, you know, I was talking about that with one of my employees, this and then I'm like, yeah, I'm 10 years older than he is. And it's not a great stretch of time, but it is a damn yeah. stre big stretch of time. A decade, a long time. Yeah. But you know, consider, you know, someone could be 50 years older than you and, yeah. but there's a lot of things and he's talking about like, oh man, he was funny. He's like, oh man, this laptop's pretty old. I'm like, it's a touch screen. It can't be that old. That's not, yeah, but let's, I go, so it's probably one of the first touch screen laptops that ever came out. And I go, do you know what laptops looked like when I was your age, still a little thicker? And then you want to go back even further. He's like, yeah, I think I got this when I was first in college. That's not even a decade out for him. Right. And I go, it would have been a briefcase. And he'd be like, damn, you got money. You got a laptop in school. Dude. You were lucky to have a desktop in college at that time. Right, right. You know, Absolutely. so it's just like. It's those little things that you'll 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 gather with age and time, and you see things, and certain things just hit you differently. Yeah, yeah, they they do, and I, I you know the thing where you're like, well, if I was younger, I wouldn't have done this or I wouldn't have done that. Yeah, you're probably right, but in ten years from now, you're gonna look back at right now and say the same thing. Only now you've began all your work, so just imagine where you, where we're gonna be in ten years from now. Yeah, right. If you continue on this this kind of path and. You, in, in uh, yes. focus, yes. Yes. And I, I, I don't understand how somebody could, could begin this work, feel the fruits of their labor, and then shy any other direction. I, I think it would have to be some altering, life-changing event that throws the mental state so far off course that... Sure. Loss of a loved one, something. Something that it just, it, it pulls you away, and you just have to be brought back to it when it's right for you. Yeah. You know, and then again, I mean, you can't beat yourself up about it. You know, there's, there's definitely days where I don't want to do the work. And on those days I do way less work, mm -hmm. way less, but I always have to do something, you know, um, even if it's just carrying my mindset a little better than what it really is. Yeah. You know, cause there's days where it's like, Hey, I don't really want to be around people right now. Even if it's my family, I, I sorry, I don't want to be around anybody. Oh, we we'll, that's normal. And, I don't think, I don't care who you are. But I think that's part of the work know? too, is yeah. noticing that, pulling yourself away, say, okay, how am I going to get myself back again? Mm -hmm. You know, not just freaking out yeah. and not having your family pissed off at you. Oh, I agree. You know? Yeah, yeah Ben. So what are you going <laughs> to do next? So what's your next step of, of remaining, getting back on, on the horse? What are you, what are you doing? Uh, still doing, you know, so uh, do my meditations. That's what I'm going to have to do. And so like, you know, it was good to bring out that app, which I've had forever. It's just called, I think it's just Relax Melodies, if I'm correct. You're going to have to send me a link to that one. Uh, they got a couple of different versions of it. And you can do guided meditation ones with it where you can pick your music you want, and then yeah. someone will overspeak it. So you can kind of do that. Nice. Or you can do that. So like it's, it's it. pretty neat. And you can buy that. You know, I have the free version, but you can buy it, and then you can really yeah. get into some crazy sounds and stuff like that. But huh. um. I played a little of that last night before I went to sleep, you know, yep. real, and it's nice because you can put it low and you can put a timer so it'll kick itself off. Right. Uh, but doing like Wim's breathing again and, you know, doing Sam's meditations, you know, being consistent on the reading. And I think it's just 
those little things that bring me joy, but I think those little simple things that I know that what I'm doing is making me better. Yeah. yeah, yeah. We will never be perfect. I believe that's impossible. Sure. But your goal is that you're slowly trying to move in that direction of perfection, even though you'll never attain it. I would of course. Say. Yeah. So and it's those yeah. things. Yeah. And being okay with not being perfect. Yeah. Yeah. Which you should, we should all be. So it's those little things is trying to do that. Like I didn't meditate this morning. Cause I was like, I'm going to do it before bed today. There you go. Been a good day, but I was like, yeah, today, you know, got up early, did my workout and did some other things before uh, work. So I was like, okay, I'll do them. I'm going to do it tonight when I go to bed. So I'll, I'll do those meditations tonight. You know, I'll probably read a little this evening while cooking dinner or getting stuff ready, you know, whatever we do. But just continuing those things and things that are enriching and bettering me to be a better person, as we were saying, so that I had that better relationship with my wife, my daughter, my family, my friends, my coworkers, you know, all those people, or even the strangers that you encounter, Yeah, that you're doing things that trickles in a good way to other people. So it's those simple little gestures of, you know, we can't see each other smile with these stupid masks on, but it's like, Hey, how are you? How are you doing today? Those right. little simple things. Have a good day as you pass a stranger. Yeah. Those little things that can provide a little warmth as, you know, depending where you go, you're, you know. Yeah. You, you, you don't see those reactions and not everybody can see the emotions through the human eye. It's a very almost know. dehumanizing effect to not be able to see somebody's expression. It is. It's a very scary thing to, to walk through your day and never have seen somebody smile. Yeah. I mean, potentially. And I think for a lot of people, too, it's very hard is not everyone's in tune with others is you just, you know, you just see this and they're not in tune to look at the eyes to try and see the emotion through someone's eyes, which is fully possible. I I completely agree. Like I can read people, put a mask on and start going through some emotions and just like stare at someone in their eyes Yeah, and you can do it. Yeah. You can see when they smile because their eyes change and when they're like, "Mm." Or when they're mad, like you can see those emotions without seeing the full face. And I think that's what a lot of people, you know, depending where you're at, not everyone is masked crazy, but those of you in those areas pay closer attention to the people you're around and and try to have that connection and eye contact with them to see the emotion that they're giving you or vice versa. You, they may not be able to see, you know, from your eyes down, but if you're pissed off, they're going to see it in your eyes and they will feel that. I, I, I'm worried that, that we're not going back. And I'm worried that, that, um, that online, um, what is the word I'm looking for? The online, like, uh, anonymity, anonymity. Yes. Yeah. Keyboard warrior, so to speak is, and that mentality is also sort of, um, it's a very metaphorical, and I'm, I'm afraid that it's headed towards that way with the masks where people are going to start to be like, you know what? Be more of a drone. Yeah, hell with Robotic. other people, right? Yeah, I've noticed, like, over the past few months, like, I'll hold a door open for somebody, and there, there's nothing. Mm-hmm. I'm like, I'm going to keep doing this because I think you deserve it as a human, but that's pretty shitty to never say thank you for people to just – just just brush past you like all you are is a mask and a set of eyes. Yeah. You know, like I, I hope it changes. I hope that that's not the way we're going, but it feels like it just feels that way sometimes when I'm out. It feels very, very discouraging. And, it, and I think those, the as crazy as it sounds, the normal traditions we were accustomed to prior to the mask era, I think people have forgotten. They, you hold a door. Thank you. Like they don't know how to respond because they're trying to get in as fast as they possibly can to get right, by you so they're right. not in that bubble. Right. I think those simple good manners and gestures that we are accustomed to, a lot of people, they're still there, but people don't know how to react to them because they don't want to be in that bubble of, oh, well, thank you, you know, and yeah. hey, man, you know what the, you know, they don't want to overstep those bounds. And I don't think people know where those bounds are anymore because it's a brand new world, right? It's complete. Yeah. It's a brand new world and it's completely shifted. So, like, yeah. normally being like, oh, hey, you know, hold the door. Oh, thank you for that. You know, blah, blah, blah. Like, right. people won't do those things now. Yeah. I don't like that because I, I think that it's, it's the most basic form of, um, of compassion that you can show out in public for somebody Mm -hmm. like, Hey, you know what? I'm going to pull this door open so you can, you can walk through without having to do it yourself. 
You no longer have to even touch that door. I'm going to do it for you. Yeah. Okay. I don't need a pat on the back, but what I'm noticing is a downturn in people doing nice things for other people. Yeah. It's, it's dehumanizing. Now, I, now what happens if it goes on for too long and that becomes the norm? I think it'll be a forgotten art amongst some, but some won't. Was, you know, like chivalry type thing is dead. You know, Are we going to have to go to thing. underground bars or like restaurants to, to have a mask off so you can see real humans and real, you know what I mean? You know, it's, I think it, it's just going to be, <clears throat> there'll be those that will hold those traditions to slowly bring it back. Right. You know, I, I think it's just with anything in time, of course, like it will, it's just going to be one of those rough things of, You'll have the few, like you and I and others, that will do those, as crazy as it again sounds, old school, traditional ways right. out in public, that those things will come back. I think more people are more nervous to attempt some of those things because they don't know the reaction of the person. Yeah, Are they really COVID nuts? They're going to flip shit. Right. Because you try to do a kind gesture when that was your true intention. When, oh, you're too close to me. You know, you're in my bubble, blah, blah, blah. I think a lot of people are more fearful to try it because they're more afraid of the reaction from the yeah. other person yeah. and all that. Like I held it one, uh, was it the other day at the gas station or wherever? Yeah, I held the door. The guy's like, oh, just push it. I'll get you. That way I'm I'm, I'm out of your bubble. I'm like, oh, okay. So like I, yeah. I came and I just pushed the door hard and he grabbed it and then went in as I went out. Because yeah. I get, he, again, I think he was thinking of me that maybe he didn't want, he was afraid that I would not be. I think people are overthinking liking. this, and I think they are. I mean, and that's the th- part about it. But it is too much. I was pushing the door this way. He was like, "Where well, this microphone is over here?" Sure. And he goes, "Yeah, just push it." And he grabbed it, and so I went this way because that's where I parked. And yeah. then he came in. I think he was trying to respect my bubble of, "Oh yeah, yeah, thank you." And he said, right, thank, yeah. Thank you. "Yeah, just push it. I got you." Yeah. And he came this way, and I went that way. You I know, think a lot of people are trying to be more considerate of the bubble. Which I, I agree, but it, if we've done this since day one, nobody's going to have an immune system, and nobody's going to be able to ever get sick. And that, that's the hard I don't know, part man. of. I don't know. We're so worried about other people's feelings that we just can't go on and live life anymore. You know, it's, it feels that way sometimes, doesn't you know? it? Yeah, it feels like like people just take care of yourselves, get some vitamin C, right? Get some vitamin D or go out in the sun. Like like yeah. those will help you more so than just like running into an open door instead of grabbing it and opening it. I mean, come yeah. on, get the vitamin D. Go, you know, in the morning dew or the evening and walk barefoot in the grass. Get your reconnection with Earth. Like just. Yeah, and do if you, those yeah. little things, and I promise you, you know, it'll go a long way. And the kind gestures, do them. You might get some random asshole that snaps that's very paranoid about COVID. But I bet nine times out of ten, you're not going to get that person if you do a kind gesture. Yeah, I hope so. I or yeah, I hope not. I guess I should say. And I didn't mean to go off on a tangent about no, but going out in public. It's just it's an odd time for people that are trying it's, it's to connect time. with people. You know, and uh, that's that's something that I. I I swear, I people ask me all the time, why do I have old cars, old vehicles? I'm like, well, the ones that I drive, I'm very particular about, but they always tend to draw a crowd. So I always get more people that I can talk to. And if I'm talking to somebody, we, even if it's at the gas station for well, 15 now you're minutes. you're in a rarer crowd with the Mercedes versus the Jeep. Jeep, you were in a... Oh, yeah, it was huge. Yeah, no, this is like, I get I get people that are generally a little more mature well, yeah, and you in their age. that old school crowd of yes. people who... Might have even bought one of those new mm-hmm. that still has those, or the classic car collectors and stuff right. like that. But those conversations feel so good because they're like conversations of a year ago where yeah. it was just a conversation and there was no, and like when you were done, you shook hands or you bumped fists or if you knew them, you hugged them. I miss that. Yeah. And it's, I get a little bit of that when people want to talk about the car because they're passionate about it. Yeah, and for those of you that don't know, and of course you don't know, it's just an old. It's a 1985 Mercedes, Mercedes, uh, 300 turbo diesel wagon. It's nothing fancy, but it's a one owner car, and it's beautiful. And people want to talk about it. So what I'm saying is that you have the ability to touch people's lives in a positive manner, even at the gas station if they want to come and talk to you about your car. Yeah, take advantage of it. No, I had a, I'm not, I had a guy at Walmart the other day. You know, I got a new truck. Hey, mate. Dude, love the truck. Oh, thank you. Appreciate that. Yeah, would you all do it? And I go, uh, I've only done a few things. Other yeah, than that, sure. I got it this way. Yeah. Goes, oh, man. Well, we're, you're like, oh, I got it right up here at the local dealership. Oh, man. Okay, cool. And like, yeah. they did it all. I did not do anything. But thank you. You yeah, know? Sure. And it's those little things that it's still nice. You know, people yeah. want to know. I know what's all been done to it, but I'm not taking credit that I did it. Right. 
But like, it's those, it's nice to see people wanting to have a conversation. Oh man, hey, cool, it's a cool car. Yeah. Well, it, inev- it inevitably goes another direction. It's, yeah, the car is nothing more than just a magnet for people. Yeah, and it's a it's a catalyst to talk about a car, absolutely. Truck, but it might jump a little deeper to something else. Yeah, well, it's no different than when somebody says, "Hey, how you doing?" I say, "Better than I deserve." Kind of like the it's, old school way at the bar. Me and you could be sitting at the bar, and you know, we're drinking. Like, hey, how you doing? Good, man. Good day. Yeah. Are you talking about what's on the TV? Yeah. And then it spawns into something else. Well, right. oh, what do you do? Oh, I'm, I'm Jeff. Right. Oh, you're Jeremy. Cool. Yeah. Well, what do you do? Well, that's what I do. Well, cool. You're from the area? It spawns into something else. Well, let me get you a drink. Oh, cool. cool. Well, you realize that anybody could be a dear friend yeah. if you just gave it a chance. But it, I think those small conversations you're talking about to tell people to kind of be open to, right. you, we could be across the room and have it. But you're continuing the old ways of human interaction that's missing. And like yeah. outside, if you're at a gas station, wherever you may, you could pull down the mask oh, yeah, and have yeah. the or not have the mask on. Sure, and yeah. See the emotion or walk around the car and it's let It's invigorating. That you can have that little piece of normalcy today, mm-hmm. you know, versus like yeah. Yeah, what are you doing? Yeah, 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 yeah. You know, I can't hear what you're saying. You right. know? Yeah. Yeah, it sucks. I hate not seeing the emotion on people's faces. And, and yeah, you can see it in their eyes. It's hard too even now because, like, you know, I put the the AirPods in. I was talking to my wife earlier, and I had my Gator on in the store. What are you saying? I had to pull it down. It's like you can't even talk on the phone normal now no. because you're damn. Bo- you're gonna have to be so flipping loud. Yeah. Yep. And Everybody's like, gonna hear it. The normalcy even of that is is changed. But right, I think it's those small little things of like, see someone's car, or something cool, or you like something. Hey. Love them shoes or nice car. Dude, I passed Say a it. Volkswagen van the other day that my daughter would have fell in love with. Like and I, the I think old, they're the old yeah, an old one, old one. And I thought it I think they're cool by proxy. Like my daughter thinks they're cool. So I think they're cool. Right? Like yeah. my daughter wants well, one. They're very rare. Yeah. yeah. So something. I see one and it was like it was it was in really good shape, not immaculate. It was a driver. It had like just married on it and all sorts of stuff. And these kids, you could tell they were in their young twenties and they were having fun. Man, I've got a massive, loud, massively loud horn on my Mercedes. So I pull up next to him on the highway. I'm like, beep, beep. And he looks over. I give him the thumbs up and everything. He knows it's cool. But that right there gave him that endorphin rush that. Oh, it just took him to hear. Right. And just like you would get if you got a great message on your phone. Oh, and he probably talked about you. That was real. How many people he encountered? I bet you. I, I would guarantee he looked at his new wife and said, "Oh, look at that old freaking wagon. That guy just honked at us. You know, look at this old dude in his car." Right, exactly. <laughs> like, my punk ass gets yeah. out. But um, but no, but yeah. he probably talked about that. That later on, wherever they went, oh man, somebody was honking at us. And I was like, yeah, right, yeah, you know, yeah. Whether excited for the cool ass van or that they were just married. Right. Well, I, I liked that, it both. I thought it was beautiful. But that, yeah. Well, you don't see just married on cars anymore. That's a forgotten. Not done right. very often thing anymore. I know, I know. It sucks. Well, Kelly and I did, uh, we had magnets and balloons all over. The balloons didn't make it, but the magnets all stuck to the oh, well, that's good. truck and everything. Which is, hey, that's a sm- Hey, very okay, smart, cool. Yeah. We can do the magnets and everything. That's yeah. pretty smart. Yeah. That's but, very uh, cool. But, yeah, you just don't see those things anymore. No, nah, you don't. You don't. And I'm not trying I'm not trying to get all nostalgic here, you know, guys. I'm just, I was just saying it's, it's pretty cool sometimes whenever you can connect over something that's not shiny and new. I'd say just don't forget the right? old things. Yeah, don't forget the old things. That's a very, you know, the last episode we had, I think it was episode 20 or maybe 19. Yeah, maybe it was 19. I think, uh, or fuck, I don't know, it might have been 18. Uh, one of them was uh, when old is does more than new. Yeah. And, you know, that was a good segue into this, uh, unbeknownst to us, but it is. It's whether it's a, a tradition or whether it's it's whatever it can it can all all too often it can be better in, if you let it you know if we were talking earlier about an old laptop i bet that guy hadn't really cleaned his laptop and i mean inside oh, and I thought, out i thought it was funny cuz he you know he had a plug in an out uh, external hard drive I'm like dude he goes really that much memory and he's like oh man i've had this in college i've all my college papers on there this this and that and i go Pfft. To the laptop back in the day, you would be able to get two papers on that damn thing. Well, safe. and the thing is, get it off, clean the damn thing up, reinstall your your operating system. But like, I bet you it's as good as new. Oh, I guarantee it. Yeah, yeah. and he's not going to get a new one anytime soon. He goes, "I want a newer one for you know for size." But yeah, you know, yeah, yeah. that's a weird too th- weird thing too, man. Is now I think we're going to enter, and this is totally off subject, but what the hell? Uh, I think soon we're going to start entering into an age of um, of data waste to where oh. you have all these companies with all these terabytes of storage that are going to be like, listen, 
you've got 80 of the same file on here. You know, like this is getting ridiculous because we can't just keep throwing data on. Well, it's like your phone will tell you if you have duplicate, uh, right. Photos and and stuff stuff, like that. Yeah. Yeah. It'll start doing that. Like, I think it's a smart thing. Yeah. I think that it's going to, I think the days of just leaving all of that stuff on here Mm -hmm. are over because what if it dies in five minutes from now? What if it just shits the bed and you can't do anything about it? I guess you could tear it apart and pull the hard drive out if you wanted to, but but come on, I get that shit off there. Put it on external. It's going to be a little bit more secure, a little bit more stable, you know? Um, Yeah. Make things easier, man. Uh, You know, when you make things, make your workspace cleaner, when you make your computer cleaner, when you make everything cleaner and by clean, I just mean free of clutter. It's a lot like your mind. It's a lot easier to navigate when you're not constantly talking to yourself, trying to, talk yourself into or out of something or making up some stupid ass story in your head that was never even real. I agree. I mean, come on, keep it clean. <laughs> I agree, man. I completely agree. <laughs> right on, man. Well, I think we've rambled enough today. Yeah. And uh, I sure appreciate you being here. And I, it was well, man, it was, it was good. Well, I hope well needed today. Good. I hope that uh, <laughs> the days forward uh, get a little easier for you and you fall back. Into they, they all have been, man. Yep. I want good. to give a quick shout out to, to our, uh, Boy, Mr. Joshua Chapman, for uh, helping me the other day. Oh, yeah, it's CFT Performance. Yes, yes, yes. Went to, got to check out a shop. Josh, you got a badass shop, dude. You got some cool toys that I've only seen on TV people use. Yeah. I would love to use, but I'd break them because I don't know what the hell I'm doing. Uh, yeah, but yeah. Uh, the man helped me put in um, my headlights, my fog lights, my taillights. The only thing I was probably about capable of doing would have been the probably fog lights and the taillights to how much work that we had to do. Give you a little, just a little insight to what this man had to do for me. We had to like remove side uh, uh, f- wheel wells, fenders inside the wheel well, part of the bumper, the whole flipping uh, grill, like to get these headlights out. Oh my! And the dude did it with effort. And I'm thinking this is going to take hours. This man, yeah, I literally just held shit. Yeah, that's Josh. I didn't touch a tool. Yeah. He doesn't do that for everybody He because he doesn't really do a whole lot of outside work. He really is more of a fabricator. Yep. But, damn, if he puts his hands on it, and it's going to be I right. I needed his help because I knew he's the only guy I knew that had these tools that I don't have. He's like, oh, man, you could have done it. And like, after my like, dude, I, I, you don't even know how I appreciate it, man. Yeah, I sent him all these photos of my, you know, the lights and everything and the truck. And he was so humble about it. He's like, oh, man, you could have done it. I'm like, I, I thank for your confidence, Josh. But, you know, whatever. I don't think I could have. But. Right. Just wanted to give you some love, brother, because I appreciate it, man. Absolutely. And all that, because I definitely wouldn't have been able to pull all that without you. So appreciate it, let alone you got a badass shop. That's right. Check him out on Instagram, on uh, on Facebook, and yeah. his website, CFT Performance. Uh, they do a lot of uh, diesel work, a lot of uh, metal fabrication, do a lot of powder coating. Yeah. Anything yeah. you need performance to get some extra horse, that's, that's your dude. That's it. That's it. Right on. All right, Josh, hope you're listening. You have a great day. (laughs) Everybody else, hope you're having a great day and you're with the ones you love. If not, go make it happen. Absolutely, guys. Right on. Enjoy. We'll see you guys later. Peace. (laughs) Oh, you got to hit your clicker. I forgot. (laughs) I was going to hit. It's like, dude, you forgot the red. Nope. Oh, shit. Is that in for everyone? Let me do it again just in case. All right. And what I wanted to do, which I didn't, which I got for my birthday. Your thing now or we can start. You gotta do it. <laughs> we gotta do it over again. <laughs> oh, it's too older. So you can do it this way too. Knock down to hell. Knock to hell. Knock to hell. Knock to hell.